understand the commutative property or the turnaround facts. So here we have a multiplication problem, 3 times 4. In our last video, we learned that this is really telling us that we have three groups with four in each one. We drew a circle around the three because that tells us how many groups to draw, and the dot above the four because it tells you how many goes in each group. If you want to visualize that, here would be group one, group two, group three, and each one of those gets four dots within it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, we can take this type of picture and turn it into an array. An array is just an organized way of arranging your group so that it's easier to count. I still want to make sure that I start with three groups, but with an array, that's when you're lining things up into rows and columns. So to help me, I like to draw three lines. Here's group number one, here's group number two, and here's group number three. Drawing the lines just helps me to make sure that I'm organizing them correctly. Now I still end up with four on each group, or four on each line. So here's one, two, three, four. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but your goal is to try to get them as closely lined up as possible. Now I want three groups of four. Here's one group of four. Let's put four on the second line. One, two, three, four. Right now what I have is two groups of four. Notice I want three groups of four. So here's another one, two, three, four. This is an array. An array is an organized set of groups. I still use the same strategy as before. I made sure I had three groups, group one, group two, group three, and I made sure that there was four within each group. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's look at an array that's already been created and figure out what this is showing us. Use the strategy that I just showed you. The first thing we did was to figure out how many groups. Here's group number one, here's group number two, and here's group number three. Since there are three groups, I know my multiplication problem is starting with a three. Then you need to figure out how much goes inside each group. Well, each group has one, two, three, four, five, six items. Notice this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, and this one has one, two, three, four, five, six. Multiplication is just repeating addition over and over and over again. So this array we figured out was three groups of six in each group. Now, I want to show you a trick that will help you to only have to memorize half as many multiplication problems. What we have right here is a three by six array. There are three groups and each has six in it. It's written as three times six. And if you figure that out, you would count to figure out that there are 18 little squares. Now, if I do this to my array, whoa, did I change how many squares there were? No, all I did was twist it around. But what I have now is a very different multiplication problem. Let's see what we have. Count how many rows you have. One, two, three, four, five, six. Notice this time I have six groups, so I'm going to start my multiplication problem as six. Your second step is to figure out how much is in each group. Well, I can clearly see that each group has one, two, three within it. Even though I twisted it around and now have six times three instead of three times six, I know that I have the same total of 18 because I didn't add or take away any squares. So I have a total of 18 squares either way. What I've just shown you is the commutative property. The commutative property, or the turnaround property, tells you that it doesn't matter if you make three groups of six or six groups of three, your answer is still going to be the same.